As men, we are naturally loners. It's not to say that we don't have friends, and we don't pursue social relationships with people. I mean, human beings are, at base, social creatures, some more so than others. But men, by and large, are lone wolves. We stick to ourselves because it is the individual man who is the man who can rely upon himself most. We don't have the luxury of the world fawning over us simply for our existence, as is often the case with women, although not always. And so men try to become self-reliant. They develop a path that is very much the path of the loner. Now this isn't anything new per se, this observation. I'm merely pointing this out because along with this path of solitude, if you wish to call it that, there comes something else that is a state of comfortable and familiar equilibrium. Particularly in my own case, and not just in my own case, but especially in my case, but also in the observation of other men I've known, friends, acquaintances, stories I've heard through PM subscribers sharing their uh, the details of these stories with me. It's become clear to me at this point in time that when you walk the path of solitude, some people call it like MGTOW monk. I'm not going to use this term, though. I think it's silly. But simply go about your life, do your own thing, generally don't engage in relationships. You have a kind of inner peace. There's also a sense of nagging doubt, I think, that is endemic to human nature, particularly male nature. We always wonder what we're missing out on. Uh, you go long enough without something, you, you think it, it might be something special particularly if you've already partaken in that. And I had mentioned that in a previous video with regards to men who had had sex but then hadn't had sex in a long time, etc. But the issue here is that you develop this comfortable sense of equilibrium over time. Well, uh, that can be a good thing. It's To describe the feeling, many of you might know it, it's a sort of nothing is particularly wrong, but nothing is all that great either. Now, enter, <laughs> enter the, the relationship, um, pursuing relationships with women. What I'm talking about here is a disturbance to the familiar sense of equilibrium that naturally came about due to you walking the path of solitude, doing your own thing, going about your own business. It comes in waves, the ups and downs. One day you're feeling euphoric, the next day something's wrong. And it isn't limited to just one day. It can be weeks, months, and in some cases, a few years. But there is a disturbance to the equilibrium that you'd come to know. In many cases, the disturbance is welcome. After all, you had been, you know, effectively chased for several years, or you simply didn't bother with anything serious. And uh, that influx of neurotransmitters and chemicals, dopamine, serotonin, etc. It really gives you a high, a high you hadn't known previously. It catches you off guard, you could put it. And, of course, you feel really great because the once rather bland feeling of equilibrium has been replaced by something else, something new, something... Well, it's actually not new, and that's the point. It's not new, you just had forgotten what it's like. And humans being what they are, we naturally seek out these new experiences, perceived new experiences, experiences of old that you'd forgotten, perhaps, is a better way of putting it. And you feel really great for a while. But then something inevitably goes wrong. And, I mean, what human relationship, particularly a romantic relationship, doesn't have this? And you are rocketed from the very top... Uh, of the atmosphere or you're from going from the stratosphere down to the well the the very bowels of the earth in some ways things are disturbing in the sense that not everything is as stable as you thought it would be you misapprehend the feeling that you had of uh, elation as something semi-permanent you think that might be the new equilibrium. But human relationships with women, unfortunately, are always fraught with peril in the sense that, well, how about shit tests? 
In my discussion with the red pill chemists not too long ago, we talked about the so-called ideal relationship, which is effectively one in which a man periodically passes repeated shit tests ad infinitum until he dies, more or less. I mean, that's the best you can do. Never showing feelings or vulnerability. That's the best relationship you can have, more or less. Uh, so it seems that in the context of male-female relationships, the kind of equilibrium uh, that you would associate with the, the path of the lone wolf, the, well, the path you, most men are on, and particularly MGTOW-minded men, is an impossibility. It's not to say you don't reach an equilibrium in some relationships, certainly marriages, uh, when the feelings ebb and flow and they finally die out and you just become, well, effectively roommates. You haven't had sex in three months. You don't really want to have sex <laughs> anymore. And the, the discussion of the day is, you know, you mistakenly picking up uh, only one liter of milk as opposed to two or forgetting the nappies or whatever. I mean, that's a kind of equilibrium too. But I would argue that kind of equilibrium, the one that sets in after a long time, say in a marriage, is one that uh, doesn't give you that sense of, well, things are okay, they're not amazing, but they're okay. It's one that niggles and nags at you. I know this not from personal experience in a marriage, although I have had these experiences in relationships, but rather the, the conversations I've had with men who had been formerly married or men who are still married. Now, every now and then, subscribers will reach out to me, and if I feel their st story is compelling enough, I, I, I'd like to hear it. And so there's a difference between the kind of equilibrium that you'd find in the sort of stale uh, marriage with uh, where you're effectively the roommate to the other person and the kind of okay equilibrium of solitude, uh, the path of the lone wolf, if you will. This, to my mind, is something rather huge and something that's not talked about very often. And I think it should be. Because I think we as men really have a fundamental choice. We can ride the roller coaster of life, and by that I mean, of course, these romantic roller coasters of either passing multiple shit tests, not passing them, failing, having things change. Cotery brought up a good point in a recent video of his that referencing the linear male mind versus that sort of punctuated uh, state that women view things in. I mean, w once there's a crack, the crack is there uh, forever. And uh, it's irrevocable that, you, you know, you make a mistake, that's it, as pertains to women in this regard. Um, whereas men are much more linear. Well, is it worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? Well, I suppose that depends on your goal, obviously, if you want to procreate and what have you. There are necessary obstacles you need to get around and there are things that you would need to do. However, uh, this is, well, this is not uh, something that every man wants necessarily. And some men simply debate the question of getting on that roller coaster that will effectively shatter your equilibrium to, I guess, enjoy the ups and downs of romantic love, whatever that might be. Now, when I think about it in my own case, after many years of essentially being a lone wolf, walking the path of solitude, of course, every now and then, one has these pangs of you know, wanting or yearning for something ill-defined and, and, and poorly described. Um, call it love, companionship, whatever. It's human. Uh, you feel it without a doubt. And in feeling that, I think we as men need to be aware of the fact that not that the yearning is deceptive. I think it's it's legitimate. It's uh, it's authentic. However, uh, the consequence of that, once you, you walk out of that state of equilibrium, uh, you might start missing it after a while. That's particularly true when the high that you're experiencing, the honeymoon phase, if you want to call it that, sort of shatters. Things become more normalized. You don't feel exactly the same way. And eventually, even in a non-marriage relationship, the staleness sets in. You're just sort of comfortable with each other, I guess. 
But the problem with this comfortable with each other mentality is that in a relationship, as every one of my subs has probably experienced, or many of them experience, in a relationship with a woman, um, there is no real comfort zone. I mean, there will always be shit tests. Uh, and so the comfort zone, the notion of sort of just being comfortable with yourself and in your relationship, that doesn't uh, really exist. The, the, the best laid plans fail and the most carefully crafted relationships, the ones you thought would last forever, the ones that are based on quote-unquote respect and love, they disintegrate and wither in time until all the people, the participants are left with is a sort of dry taste of ashes in their mouths. That's not the same thing as just being chilled out and being okay on your own. And as I said, there's no doubt every man feels some sense of yearning, if only sexual, perhaps more as well. But it's, uh, it's a little bit more than that. It's the realization that we really do have this choice as men between riding this roller coaster of constantly shifting emotions dealing with not just uncertainty because life is composed of uncertainty there's i mean that that is an axiom of life to some degree apart from death and taxes as they say but the kind of uncertainty that can really throw you off in some cases the most extreme cases can ruin your life and perhaps even lead you to commit suicide in any event can leave you in a particularly distraught state there are degrees of uncertainty and, and our willingness to accept these degrees of uncertainty, well, that tells us a lot about ourselves. For myself, I honestly don't foresee myself, I can't say positively, the more I've thought about this and had conversations with people, uh, entering again into this uh, roller coaster or this, this ride of the ups and downs and the bumps in the road and whatever relation you feel, you know because it is the natural course of things that the relationship will end at some point in time. And even if it doesn't end in a formal sense, the staleness, the insipid boredom, that, that feeling that we all have come to know on occasion, you know, of having the roommate or the housemate, that, that's going to set in eventually. And then you can keep on telling yourself, I've seen, it's interesting, I've seen women in particular keep on telling themselves uh, you know, through as if, well, narrative. Oh no, I love my husband. Even if I don't love my husband, I still respect my husband. <laughs> Even if I don't respect my husband, he's still a good father. I mean, this sort of descending escalator <laughs> down to the depths of, of justification for things. Eventually it just becomes too much or more aptly put too little and mm, ejection switch oftentimes. Man doesn't really pay attention. But this is the problem with men, I think, in general, that we, we're not as observant in some ways as we'd like to be. Sure, we're observant of mathematical phenomena and meteorological phenomena, but these sort of minute changes in relationships. Men become comfortable. Men become comfortable as lone wolves on the path of solitude, but there isn't a real disruption to that. I mean, there can be health disruptions or what have you, but these things are usually reasonably temporary. Um, they don't have the, the sort of terminal point that every relationship see, seems to be heading uh, towards. And as a consequence, um, I think men really have this decision to make of not necessarily either or, but sticking with the peaceful, sometimes, sometimes questionable solitude. Uh, questionable in the sense that there's still that human yearning factor or embarking on that great journey repeatedly. A life that is an, essentially in a near eternal roller coaster ride until you die. Ups and downs and turns and pivots and... For myself, I don't know. I don't think I can deal with that anymore. I don't enjoy the feeling or I haven't enjoyed the feeling when I've partaken of it in the past. And there's a certain... Well, there's a certain beauty to just chilling out, accepting the equilibrium, imperfect as it is, in your solitude as a lone wolf, and accepting that that's okay too. And I think men being desperate for companionship, precisely because they're so alone, 
often forget that lesson. And it's a lesson that is difficult to learn and one still more difficult to drive home, if only because most men, I don't think, have the mental or emotional constitution to realize these things and do effectively a cost-benefit analysis. What is more beneficial? Peace and quiet, lack of disturbance, nothing too exciting, nothing too great maybe, but nothing too bad either, or the ups and downs, the demands that are put upon you and what have you. The oftentimes incurred misery that unfortunately accompanies the romantic relationship. This is a question I think more men need to pose to themselves, whether they're MGTOW-minded men or not. Rather than viewing a relationship or a marriage as something that you just have to do, because, you know, we done always done it that way, or something along those lines, something that really is more than just optional. It's, it's, it's a choice between two states of mind, effectively. And this is my own uh, view on this. In any event, gentlemen, thanks for tuning in, and I will check you out later. A bit tired today, but uh, more to come, uh, as usual, and enjoy the frosty month of January. I'm certainly enjoying the climate far more than I would the summer. Take care. Bye-bye. And may the gods watch over you. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.